Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. And today we have a full review, a full review of the Cold Steel 8015. A uh, very, very cool knife. Andrew Demko design made by Cold Steel. I did do a first impression of this thing a little more than three weeks ago. And you guys have still been asking me questions about it and asking when the full review is going to come out. And I have this thing has spent a lot of time in my pocket. And I, I have, I do have a few new opinions. I've torn it apart, put it back together, all those kind of things. I, th I think it's, it's, it's well time to just go ahead and do this. They are currently not available, but a lot of places have them up for pre-order right now. So we want to jump on that. Uh, estimated shipping times I've seen is usually like uh, end of May, something like that, early May, something like that. Um, uh, yeah, end of May. Sorry, yeah, end of May. Uh, so. Jump on those if you want to get one soonish, soonish, but awesome knife. Andrew Demko design. It is a very faithful representation of his MG8015. Um, I guess you'd call it mid tech. Uh, that's the one with the machine ground blade. I think they're more than a mid tech. They are still pretty much uh, fully assembled, or you know, fully everything else is handmade, uh, except for just the blades, machine ground, and then hand finished. Pretty faithful representation because the only differences are this yoke on the back, which is what they call part of this very unique scorpion lock, which we'll talk about in just a second, uh, is aluminum instead of titanium. Your liners are stainless steel instead of titanium. And the blade stock is a little bit thinner. On the MG8015 from Andrew Demko, you're looking at uh, 0.18 uh, blade stock thickness. This is 0.15, so it's a little bit thinner, which is probably better for most people as far as kind of if you're going to use this as an EDC knife but other than that pretty true to it and that's pretty good because this costs 160 bucks and that MG8015 is 675 so yeah and this you can just once they're back in stock places you can just go buy this is a full production knife it's just that everybody jumped on them initially so right now there's a bit of a gap uh, where they're not quite available. Who knows when you're going to be watching this video, but right now in early March of 2019, they're not really available many places, but you'll be able to find them very, very soon. Um, yeah, that's a huge difference in price and not much of a difference in the knife. I can say quality-wise, it's outstanding. I haven't held the original one, but it's this is more, more than, more than good enough. 460 bucks quality on it is great the unique feature of this is and on the mg8015 of any of these scorpion lock knives is definitely obviously the scorpion lock it's kind of this back strappy thing i'm doing this early in the video because when i did my first impressions it was like 10 minutes in before i messed with the lock and people put me skip ahead to whatever watch so, so now i'm doing i'm doing it early to satisfy you guys it is uh just a really cool lock to play with. It's a lot of fun. I'm still going to save some of my observations about it for later. But uh, it's very easy to actuate. It's just, now that I got the hang of it, I put my thumb here. I put one finger here. This is how I do it anyway. And I just let it drop. Because it, it is, once you do some maintenance on it, it's definitely a pretty smooth drop shutter. We'll talk about that a whole lot more later. But let's do some stats and some size comparisons before we get too much farther. And I forget, because I have a tendency to do that. Overall length, you'll see this. This is a big knife, but it's not a giant one. Overall length, 8.5 inches. Blade length, a little over 3.6 inches, just a hair over. You have a blade thickness, as I said, 0 0.15 inches. Handle thickness, fairly thick, but not crazy, 0 0.59 inches. Weight, 6.55 ounces. Definitely not light but it's not quite the tank that it looks like. Um, I'm going to do some size comparisons, then we're going to talk about how it's not quite the tank that it looks like. So we will compare it first up to, here's a couple of, this is one of the new standards that I want to add in here. This is your Benchmade full-size Griptilian. You can see it's a little bit bigger than that, but you know, not dramatically so. And your... Spiderco Paramilitary 2, even closer in size to that. And compare it to, oh, here's a couple of slightly more expensive. Um, this is this is one that I, one of the other only like kind of 
bulky knives that I carry a whole lot, and I carry this one a ton, uh, the ZT0562 tie. And if you want to just imagine that this is a Hinder XM18 3.5 inch, they're almost exactly the same dimensionally. And because this is the Hinder design, this is basically the ZT version of that. And then your uh, Benchmade 940. It's much bigger than the 940, but you can see compared to the 0562 tie, not that much bigger. And I, I carry the hell out of this thing. Uh, and then just lastly, a couple of other cold steels I've got here. It is bigger than the American Lawman, but it's not, obviously it's much bulkier, but in thickness, but as far as length and stuff goes, very similar to the Code 4. Code 4 may even be a tick longer. I was trying to line up the pivots on these, which I'm failing miserably at right now, but, um, but it's, here's a unique thing about this knife that has struck me more and more and more, uh, that I've carried it, and one of the, my opinions have changed about it, I, I keep saying bulky. Uh, it's bulky when it's closed. When it's in this, when it, when it's in this position, and you like take it out of the box, and you're holding it in your hand when it's closed, it feels kind of tankish. But then when you look at it next to like, for example, you know, full size grip, it's thicker. It's obviously lighter, but it's just as thick. It's not, not dramatically higher. A little bit. Where's the, where did I put that PM2? Here we go. Same kind of story with the PM2. The PM2 is like just as high. It's really not that gigantic of a knife. It feels like it when it's closed and you're just holding it like this. But when you have it open and in your hand, it doesn't feel that huge. When you look down and realize you've got that much handle sticking out <laughs> it looks bigger again i have large size hand skinny fingers then it looks a bit bigger but you know using it it doesn't feel that huge and unwieldy you can choke up if you want to it doesn't feel that huge and unwieldy um in the pocket we'll get to that in a minute too when i do the, the carry section but in the pocket it doesn't feel that ridiculous um it's just the only time it feels really big is when it's closed and you're just looking at it like this but in your pocket in your hand it doesn't feel that that crazy huge so in all the ways that matter it doesn't feel that that big uh it looks and aesthetic wise uh i i i still am not have not fallen in love with the color of this um i i sat on the my first impressions i thought it was black and gray on the box and somebody pointed out they thought it was just the uh the printing on my box they were right i shined like a light on it and you could see it it was this version it just was really poorly lit and it was uh it didn't look right in that photo i do still wish it was black and gray um it fits the personality but i don't i don't like green and tan but that's just me maybe you will really like it uh i didn't, don't care for the look of the texturing on the g10 and i don't care about some other things about this texturing on the g10 but uh we'll get to that but it Quality wise, the overall look though, before before I get to quality, the overall look is the overall shape and everything I do really like. I just hope it comes out in more colors. Um, I may dye these scales, but I'm still gonna have the tan on the aluminum. Um, but it's the overall shape and everything I can't argue with. Minimal billboarding on the blade. I I kind of like the 8015 logo on there. And Cold Steel has done infinitely worse on their knives. So there's a reason why the Cold Steel American Law Man that you just saw has a song. Um, yeah, they're, I, I, I'm perfectly fine with the looks of it, other than the color. But the overall shape and stuff, I really like. And the color is a totally personal preference. Quality-wise, I have zero complaints. It's extremely well-made. All the hardware is great. I took it apart, put it back together. I'll have some tips on that as we get farther on. But um, it easy to take apart, put back together. Everything was very nicely finished inside and out. Excellent, excellent quality for the price. Excellent. Zero, zero, zero complaints as far as that goes. Um, yeah, some of the jimpings a bit sharp, but I, I think that's kind of on purpose. So I'm not even going to call that a knock. Um, I think they just, they like, this is a kind of griptastic knife. And I think that was kind of on purpose. Um, now, as far as the ergos go, very good. 
very good. Um, I, I think it still feels really comfortable in hand. As I said, it's kind of gymtastic, definitely. You've got very grippy scales, very grippy scales, and both in good ways and bad ways. And this jimping on top of the blade, I think is a, a bit much, but this is meant to be kind of a heavier used knife. So I get that. It's fine. I'll let it slide. Um, it's definitely not going anywhere in your hand at all. And this, and when you're carrying it, this jimping is not uncomfortable at all. I don't mean to insinuate that at all. It's just a bit of a pocket destroyer. But ergonomically, you can choke up. I found myself never doing that, but you can. It's, it's a really good knife ergonomically. It's very comfortable. Other than if you have a really sensitive thumb, maybe you'll find this jimping to be a bit much. But I think if you just knocked off these edges a bit with some sandpaper, you'd be fine. I, I'm not going to do it. It's not enough to bother me to do that. Blade. As I said, a little thinner than the MG8015. Uh, 0 0.155, or 0 0.15 inches. Uh, thickness behind the edge, not terribly thin. 28 thousandths, 30 thousandths, maybe. Like, that's such a hard measurement to take. Around 28 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, is it a slicing machine? No, but it's it's pretty darn good. It's much better than I expected, and I part of that is because coal seals just come with amazing edges. They're so sharp out of the box. They're just scary sharp out of the box. I cut myself doing this, the, doing the first impressions on this. I've already healed because I'm Wolverine, but um, yeah, it, it it still cut cardboard and things like that fine and it wasn't something that I was afraid to use for that like I would go back in the house to go get a better knife for that it sliced completely fine uh the tip on it though you can stab whatever the hell you want with that thing and it's gonna be fine they definitely erred with the thickness behind the edge and the blade stuck on it towards heavy use more than it being a thin little you know apple slicing machine hair whittling machine but uh it's it's, I, I think for the purpose, this blade shape, the grind, all that stuff is excellent. Uh, as far as the carry goes, let's get to that. Cause this is where I have some thoughts. This is yield Wranglers. I said in the, my first impressions, it slid down, slid in and out of the pocket. Okay. But it was going to take some pocket with it when you took it out. Uh, still stand by that. Um, except for it to add it's going to take a lot of your pocket with it when it comes out it is pretty pretty rough and i've bent this pocket clip back a bit i admit i gave up and i did bend the pocket clip back a bit because it was just a lot of my jeans are already all torn up right here like a lot of ours are and it was just taking like strings with it so i i bent the pocket clip back a bit i did it in the very scientific way of sticking it in these very same cut up wranglers and just went and bent it a bit um, it's very scientific. It was, it's extremely scientific, but I, I did that. Um, and that helped out a lot. I, I might sand the scales. Probably not. I had to do that in my recon one to make it really acceptable to carry. Um, more likely I'm just going to wait for some custom scales to come out because these are so popular. The custom scale companies are going to be jumping on these. We're going to have some soon. I already had one guy offer if I wanted to send mine into him, he'd make some, and I don't want to send it away. <laughs> so I, I haven't yet. Um, but uh, if, if they do custom scales, I'll be the first one in line. Who are we kidding? I'm going to be second in line. Jimmy Slash will be the first one in line. If you guys uh, watch Jimmy Slash's channel, I'll G-I-M-I-S-L-A-S-H. He's a huge uh, AD, or Andrew Demko fan and Cold Steel fan. I'm sure he will be first in line to get custom scales and I'll have to wait behind him but anywho it does carry well one thing in it like before I got myself distracted you know what like I said it carries smaller in the pocket it really does you can still like get your hand past all that stuff it's heavy you're gonna notice it if you have if you're having a pair if you're wearing a pair of pants where you're like I kind of need a belt with these but maybe not yeah you need a belt if you're wearing this uh, if you have this in your pocket but you can still get your hand by it there's no flipper tab sticking out anything like that it doesn't totally take over your entire pocket. Um, they're close to it, but not bad. It carries a lot smaller than it actually is. Not, it doesn't, it's not always you're going to forget this in your pocket by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it carries smaller than you'd think. The action. Okay, we're going to talk about this more, and this is where I'm going to stick in my uh, disassembly advice. So uh, no one on YouTube, but a couple people on like Instagram were saying, oh, I adjusted the pivot and it's still stiff. I can't figure it out. Well, it's got two. 
that's kind of the problem and you know and i didn't notice that at first i didn't think about that at first either i should have thought about it but obviously there's a pivot back here for the yoke and then there's your conventional pivot up front you got to tweak both of them to get the, the action down to where you want it and now yeah that's the action on it now it's awesome it's actually fun to play with it's fun just to sit here and play with it. I never thought I'd say that about a cold steel. I really didn't. I love my cold steels. The two that I have left, I mean, I used to have three. Well, I used to have four. But the the American Lawman I'll grab when I have to go actually, like, you know, I'm do a lot of cardboard slicing because it's a very slicing knife. I, I'll specifically grab it for that purpose. The uh, Code 4 I'll grab because it's thin and it's light, but it's still got the triad lock. It's still a very tough knife so I'll, I'll grab it for that kind of purpose my recon one when i had that that was the only tactical kind of knife that i had this i'll grab for the hell of it just because it's fun i like the lock it's fun to play with it i i'll grab it just just because and i never thought i'd have a cold steel you know that was like that i really didn't but that action alone has put me into that. Now, since I did mention taking it apart and we're kind of here at the end, wasn't terribly difficult taking it apart and putting it back together. It was purposeful. I, I didn't I didn't swear much, <laughs> but there is a spring here in the back, um, which if it comes out, it's not the worst thing in the world to get back in. Uh, both Jimmy Slash that I mentioned earlier and Nick Shabazz have very good disassembly videos, so I'm not going to bore you with all that. But uh, it's something that you want to pay attention to when you're putting back together. But other than that, I mean, it came apart well, and the quality inside was just as good as the outside. Um, I wouldn't say it's a joy to take apart. I'm not looking forward to the next time I have to take it apart, but it wasn't bad. I'm not worried about it, that's for sure. Answering a couple questions that people get all the time. They wanted to see more about the action. And in the first video I never showed, yeah, you can just flick it out, you know, same as like an access lock. You know, it's that it's that same kind of thing. Um, yeah, you can do that. Some people, I had all people ask, like, can you just flick it out like an axe? Yep, you can do that. Um, thumb studs work great too, though. I don't think I even showed the thumb studs in the action thing because that's not. I don't use the thumb studs very much anymore because I like just flicking it out with the scorpion lock. Um, that works great. People asked, has it gotten gunked up because you have this much blade sticking out? No, I haven't noticed any problem with it. I do carry it a fair bit. Yeah, if you zoom right in, you can see there's some stuff on there, but it... wipe it off, I guess. It hasn't caused any problems in, like, the action or anything. It is riding on Teflon, and, uh, well, it's got, like, a thin little Teflon and then a thin little bronze washer on the this pivot. I, I apologize. I don't remember what was back here, if it, I, I, if it was the same thing or not. I, I don't remember what was back there. That's not really nearly as important. Um, but yeah, that was another question I had. People asked a lot about if that G10 bothers me. I've already kind of covered that. This is a completely ambidextrous knife. That's something else I, I didn't mention. It is tip up only, but it is right hand, left hand, and the scorpion lock completely ambidextrous. It does not have two pocket clips, it just comes with the one, um, which is nice. Same either side. Some cold steels come with two pocket clips, like the American Lawman comes with two. I think the Recon One also did. Uh, come with two for right hand or left hand. Cold Steel is pretty good about taking care of lefties. They're definitely a very lefty friendly company in that regard. Left-handed, they're very friendly too. If you're left-handed, you have to be specific about that. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is this is one of the first Cold Steels, or the first Cold Steel I've ever had that I carry for the hell of it. I, I carry it times when I absolutely do not need a knife this beefy because it's fun to play with. I love the sound that it makes. It's ridiculous, but not in a completely over the top ridiculous way. And it's it's comfortable. And this blade, while well, yeah, it's a little thick behind the edge, the blade stock is a little thick by 2019 standards. It still works awesome. And it's a knife that I know if I have in my pocket, if there's a situation that comes and that presents itself to me where I need more knife than this. Uh, that's probably the least of my concerns <laughs> at that particular moment. It's going to be pretty hard to need a knife more than this. Is is this lock as strong as the triad lock? I, I think Andrew Demko himself says that it isn't, but it's pretty freaking strong. I think it's way more than I'm ever going to need, and 
and the natural design of it, you're holding it down, you know, as you're using it. Um, I, I feel like it's just as strong as any, you know, or probably more strong, knowing Andrew Demko, I'm sure it's stronger than an access lock or a compression lock or all that, because he just don't, goes crazy with those locks. So don't quote me on that, because I don't know. I, they, haven't, they haven't hung any, you know, pigs off the end of one of these or whatever they do in their videos. I'm eager to see when they do um, to compare the strength but it's a really strong lock and a fun one to play with and just a unique design. So for the price, it still has two thumbs up from me after three weeks of use. Um, you'll see this more on the channel. Like I said, I may dye the scales or sand down that one spot or I might get new ones. Who knows? But I'm sure you're going to see it around more because I'm not getting rid of it anytime soon. It's a blast. Even once I finally get my hands on an 8010. Again, when I had to make a choice between the, this, the 8010 and this, I couldn't afford both at the same time. And now they're both all sold out everywhere, so i got to wait a minute for an 8010. But um, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.